My intent with this video is to share truth with you, but also to share history with you because so many of us have been blinded and brainwashed into Zionist funded history textbooks and just Zionist funded textbooks, period. But now we're all starting to see the truth at hand and we're starting to see just how deceived we've all been and just how much history has been hidden from us. But it is the truth. Jesus was, in fact, the name of a slave ship. And I'm going to show you just what I'm talking about. Now, like I said, this is not intended to come against anyone. But however, this is to show you the history that has been hidden from us and stripped away from us for so long. So I'm going to go over these articles with you and show you just how deceived we've been. As you can see, this man's name is John Hawkins. And this is the ship Jesus of Lubeck. I'm going to go over the article with you right now on MacquireLatory.com. It says, John Hawkins of Plymouth is widely acknowledged to be the pioneer of the English slave trade because he was the first to run the triangular trade, making a profit at every stop. In 1564, Queen Elizabeth I partnered with him by renting him the huge old 700-ton ship Jesus of Lubeck, which is pictured right here, and he set forth on his second longer and more extensive voyage along with three small ships. Hawkins sailed to Borborata, privateering along the way. By the time he reached Borborata, he had captured around 400 Africans. After Borborata, Hawkins sailed to Rio de la Jaja. The Spanish officials tried to prevent Hawkins from selling the slaves by imposing taxes, but Captain Hawkins refused the taxes and threatened to burn the towns. After selling his slaves, Captain Hawkins sailed to a French colony in Florida for a respite. Captain Hawkins returned to England in September 1566, his expedition a total success as his financiers made a 60% profit. So, as we can see, slavery had begun already, and this was one of the first British-funded ships, or slave ships, with the name that just so happens to be Jesus. And it says, off the coast of Africa near Sierra Leone, Hawkins captured 300 to 500 slaves, mostly by plundering Portuguese ships, but also through violence and subterfuge, promising Africans free land and riches in the New World. He sold most of the slaves in what is now known as the Dominican Republic. He returned home with a profit in ships laden with ivory, hides, and sugar. Thus began the British slave trade. On his return to England, Queen Elizabeth Livid assailed Hawkins, charging that his endeavor was detestable and would call down vengeance from heaven upon the undertakers. When Elizabeth became fully aware, however, of the profits to be made, she joined in partnership with Hawkins and provided him with the Jesus of Lubeck, a.k.a. the good ship Jesus. Now, why is this important? Because you all can watch my video, they call him Jesus, that's not his name, because our name, the name of our Messiah, the name of of the Most High Son, Yahuwah's Son, Yahusha, his name is Yahusha, it's not Jesus. And for more, you can look at my video, and he's not white either, he's so-called black, or so, or he's Hebrew. So, what is the moral of the story here. The moral of the story here is we have been fooled. We have been, we have just been duped and our history has been stripped and taken away from us. And I'm not just talking about so-called African-Americans. I'm talking about all people in general. No, like nowhere in mainstream media history do you hear that white people were enslaved as well. I don't know if you all know that, but in the 17, 1800s, white people were also enslaved. It wasn't just the Hebrews, it wasn't just so-called Africans, it wasn't just so-called black people. All races of people at one point or another have been enslaved, and that includes white people. But you won't hear this history in mainstream media because they like to hide it from you. So, the question then goes, what was our people's downfall? And this is talking about the Hebrews, of course. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verses 26. For they went and served other gods and worshipped them, gods whom they knew not, and whom he had not given unto them. And by the way, we never knew English prior to being taken captive. The slave masters murdered our men in front of our women, then told them they loved them, and that if they didn't want to see the same thing happen to their children that happened to the men, pray to Jesus. And that's exactly what happened, because we have to remember, we were still speaking our ancient Hebrew 
uh, with other Bantu languages in the, in the so-called Congo regions and Cameroon before slavery even happened. I'm talking about the so-called African Americans, the so-called Hebrews, or the real Hebrews, I should say. We never spoke English until we came to the so-called New World, so-called America. And by the way, does this right here fit biblical prophecy? Yes, it does, because what does Deuteronomy 28 say? It says that Yahuwah would bring us back again into Egypt with slave ships. And this was one of the first ones that came from Britain to the New World. And it even says right here, Deuteronomy 28, 68. So remember, uh, the real history is we ran into Africa, arrived to the Ivory Coast of West Africa, Sierra Leone, Nigeria, Ghana, and other parts like Cameroon and the Congo. And we didn't go into the African parts such as Egypt, Libya, and Ethiopia. And so then everyone started to mix. And it says, wake up one of the ships that brought us to this new world or this new region was, in fact, Jesus. We all need to wake up to this truth and see how deceived we've been. I'll leave links for this below. And also, that it, also you can see auction, auctions and auction blocks of where we were sold. And also I have this here from the Black Citizen that basically says the same thing. What has come to be referred as the good ship Jesus was in fact the Jesus of Lubeck, a 700 ton ship purchased by King Henry VIII from the Hanseatic League a merchant alliance between the cities of Hamburg and Lübeck in Germany 20 years after it purchased the ship in disrepair was sent to Sir John Hawkins by Queen Elizabeth. And it says that Hawkins was granted permission from Queen Elizabeth and then it goes on to talk about the history um, and so to speak. Also Wikipedia also mentions it as well and I know Wikipedia is not the best source for things however it is actual history. It says Queen Elizabeth I partnered with Hawkins by leasing the huge old 700 ton ship Jesus of Lubeck on which he set forth on a more extensive voyage along with three small ships. Like I said, I'll leave links below, but please, you all need to understand that we've all been deceived, we've all been fooled, and history has been hidden from us for a very long time until now. Now some people are going to take this personal and say, you're coming against Jesus Christ, you're coming against my my so-called God, you're coming against my deity, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm not coming against anyone. I'm trying to lead you to truth. And I'm trying to show you the real history, the history that your mainstream media, such as the History Channel and other sources, will not tell you. They're keeping it a secret from you because there is an agenda. The, they don't want you to know who your real creator is. And for you so-called African Americans who are still into Christianity, they don't want you to know the truth. Because yes, Christianity and Catholicism are in fact modern day Babylon. Come out of her, my people, and wake up to truth. And this is just how it, this is just how it is. It's the truth. And you know, our creator is in fact, his name is in fact Yahuwah, and his son's name is in fact Yahusha. So therefore, we need to be using the real names and see where these false pagan names come from, because this was in fact the ship. Not only that, but Jesus is also of pagan Egyptian descent. Pagan Egyptian religion, mystery Babylonian religion, all repackaged all over again. Like I said, you see stark similarities between Mary and Jesus, and Horus and Isis and Semiramis and Tammuz and the list just goes on Maya and Devaki Buddha and Ma Ma Buddha and Maya excuse me Devaki and Krishna you just see all these similarities what is that telling you it's telling you to wake up and see the truth you know so like I said I'm gonna leave these links below hopefully this will help you in your search for real history and real truth because like I said, so much has been hidden from us. What's also been hidden from us is that society was in fact black for over 4,000 years. And they like to try to let you know that Christopher Columbus was the first person to voyage to the new world, to voyage to the new Americas. No, that's not true. There were already so-called black people here in the Americas. You could look up the, you could look up the Olmecs. You could look up, you could just look up certain Indian tribes. You could look up history. History will tell you that there were so-called Africans who were in fact black that were already here in America. You look up the Moors. In fact, we gained independence or so-called white people gained independence from the Moors, the mulattoes. 
So you just look this stuff up and you'll see how amazing and how much it really stems from and how much we've been lied to. So anyway, I'll leave these links. Truth Unveiled. Shalom.